Welcome everyone. In this video, we are going to solve an example related to the reverse curve. So this is the example that we want to solve where we have been given with three different lines with their bearings. The length of one line and change at one point is given. We are being asked to calculate all the necessary data for setting out a reverse curve that connects all these lines. And it is also given that the radii of both the curves are equal. So let's solve this example. So we have been given with uh, three different lines with their bearings. Those three different lines are AB, BC and CD. So let's say that we are having a point which is the starting point and let's say which is A. So the bearing of AB line is given which is 80 degree. So let's have true north then making an angle of 80 degree with uh, the north because this is a magnetic bearing which is given to us. So then we will be having the AB line in this direction and let's say that this is the B point on that line and we are being also given with the bearing of PC line which is 110 degrees. So again drawing the true north at B point and then drawing the BC line with the bearing of 110 degrees. So then this will be the direction of BC line and let's say this is the C point on that line and the last line which is CD line and that has an, a bearing of 60 degree. Again drawing the true north and then drawing the CD line. So this is the CD line that we have. What else we have been given? We have been given with the length of this line, BC line, the distance from B to C is given and that is 200 meter and also the change at B point is given which is 950 meter and since it is given that the reverse connects all these lines A, B, B, C and C, D where B, C is actually the common tangent so therefore then we will be having the reverse curve in this way let's say that the start point of the reverse curve is over here we will have one circular arc connecting A, B and B, C then the other arc which will have center on the other side hence bending in the opposite direction for this curve, the end point of the first curve will be the start point of the second curve and this will be the end point of the second curve. So in such a way, we are actually having a reverse curve where BC is the common tangent. So it is being given to us that the radius of these two lines, let's say this is the radius of this line and let's say this is the radius of the other line, let's say both have common radius of R. So in order to set out a reverse curve which consists of two arcs, those two arcs are actually a simple circular curve. We need some basic data like we need to know about the deflection angle of both the curves and also the changes at different key points like change at T1 which is a start point of the first curve, T2 the common point or point of reverse curve and the end point of the curve which is T3 in this case. So we need to know the changes at these points and also we need to know about the deflection angles. So let's first determine the deflection angle of the first curve. So this is the first curve that we have. When we talk about the deflection angle it is actually the angle that is being formed in between backward tangent and forward tangent means I am not talking about this angle. So let's say this is the deflection angle of the first curve. Let's represent this with phi 1. So here you can see that the line AB has an bearing of 80 degree. It means this angle is 80 degree. So we want to know this deflection angle, the total deflection angle or you can say the bearing of BC line is 110 degree. So if we subtract 80 degree from 110 then we will be having 30 degree as the deflection angle of the first curve. Similarly for the second curve how we can determine the deflection angle. Again deflection angle is the angle between the backward tangent and forward tangent. So backward tangent for the second curve is BC and forward tangent is CD. So this angle would be then the deflection angle for the second curve. From here you can see that the bearing of BC is 110. So if you look closely over here this angle will then be 20 degree because 110 minus 90 which is actually the angle from true north up to east. So subtracting 90 from 110 we will be having 20 degrees then. So if this is 20 this, so this will also be 20. In a similar way you can see that the CD makes an angle of 60 degree with true north. So total angle from true north to east is 90. 
so this remaining angle would be then 30 so this deflection angle 2 would be the combination of 30 and 20 so this will make 50 degrees as the deflection angle for the second curve so once we have the deflection angle for the two curves that is 30 degree for the first curve and 50 degrees for the second curve one thing you should have uh, note here that we are not being given with the radius but so in order to set out this reverse curve we should be knowing the radius of both these curves and it is given that both these curves have the same radii of uh, let's say r which we have assumed before and also it is being given that the distance from b to c is 200 meter so using this 200 meter we can calculate the radius of uh, both these curves because bc is a common tangent if you remember in our previous video we have discussed that the length of the common tangent is actually being calculated as tangent length of first curve plus tangent length of the second curve will give us the length of the common tangent so in other words we can say that bc which is 200 meter is equal to tangent length of first curve plus tangent length of the second curve so we know the formula to calculate that tangent length which is radius is same so r 10 pi by 2 deflection angle 2 so in this equation by putting the values of the deflection angles that is so now you can see in this equation we have only r as the unknown variable so we can easily calculate by doing simple mathematics so on doing calculation you are going to get the radius of the curve as 272.38 meters. Now let's calculate the changes at the key points like the start point of the reverse curve, the common point of reverse curve and the end point of the reverse curve. So we have been given with the change at this point which is 950 meters. Now we can calculate the change at T1 point if we know the tangent length of the first curve. So let's first determine the tangent length of the first curve. So same formula. Now we have R value. So putting the value of R and phi 1. So on doing calculation you will have tangent length of first curve as 72.984 meters. So change at this point now will be change at B point minus tangent length of the first curve so 950 minus 72.984 will give us change at t1 as 877.016 meters how about change at t2 the point of reverse curve so for that we need to determine the length of the first curve the formula for the length of first curve is pi r phi 1 over 180 so if you put the value of pi r and phi 1, you will have length of first curve as 142.62 meters. Now then the change at t2 would be change at t1 plus because we are moving forward the length of the first curve which we just calculated. So putting these values we will have change at t2 as 1019.63 meters. Now for change at the last point of the reverse curve which is T3 we should be knowing the length of the second curve. So formula would be same but instead of deflection angle 1 we will be having deflection angle 2. So putting the value of pi r and phi 2 we will be having length of second curve as 237.7 meters. So then the change at T3 would be change at T2 plus the length of the second curve. So adding the change at T2 plus the length of the second curve, we will have change at T3 as 1257.33 meters. Now we have calculated all the basic distances in order to set out the reverse curve. Now we know the radius of both these curves. We also know the deflection angles of these curves. The next thing that we have to do is to set out by any method. We can use deflection angle method. We can use taking offset from the long chord method. It's up to us. But we will be using the deflection angle method. So in order to shorten this video, we are going to solve the rest part of the example in the next video. So this is all from this video. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you will continue.
watching the second video of this example related to reverse curve. Thank you.